lesson is absolutely critical for what you're going to be doing tomorrow when we have a sub. So, I wanted to get started here and actually show you exactly what I showed you in class. Only I want you to see it again so you can see not only what I do, but the order in which I do it. So, first of all, we have to realize that PO4, or the phosphate ion here, is actually a group of atoms that together has a 3 minus charge. And that ammonium, another polyatomic ion, is a group of atoms that has nitrogen and four hydrogens as a group that have an overall charge of one plus. Now, I want you to see this ammonium when we put a parenthesis around him and we have a subscript here of three, you need to understand that the parenthesis will make that three carry over to the hydrogen and the nitrogen. The other way you could write it, it would look like this. But guess what? That looks like 43, doesn't it? And in, in chemistry, we would call that 43, 43 hydrogens and one nitrogen. Where when we put a parenthesis around the whole group, that 3 is 3 times 4 and 3 times 1. There's no subscript here, but it's 1 if it's not written. And so that would make it 3 nitrogens and 12 hydrogens. Now, you also would, it would be helpful for you to understand that the ammonium ion is not this structurally. In other words, how it is made. It's not made this way. All of those hydrogens are hooked right into the nitrogen. And let's look at that, how that would actually look. Down here, this is the actual structure of ammonium. And you have nitrogen in the middle, one, two, three, four hydrogens, all hooked up to the nitrogen. And that is a unit, which is why I put a circle around it. So the ammonium, NH4, being three of them, as you see here, three ammoniums, means that we have ammonium one, two, three times, literally. And if we have three ammoniums, we have one, two, three nitrogens. Over here, we have three times one, three nitrogens. See how this works together? We got four, eight, twelve hydrogens, which is the same as three times four is twelve. So we not only have the right numbers of atoms, but we also have more correctly structurally written, more correctly structurally written. <laughs> anyway, this is more correct than, of course, writing it this way. So that's why we do those parentheses. So going back to our problem, we want to use these guys together to form a compound. And that's what we're going to do over here. So the first thing you do is you write the ions without charges. NH, oops, NH4. Leave a little bit of space. There's no plus, there's no minus, there's no anything over here except the atoms in the molecule and their subscripts. And the other part of the molecule will be the PO4 phosphate ion. Now you'll notice there's no charges here. We had charges written here and here, but over here, no charges. So now what we have to do is get the numbers right of how many ammonium ions and how many phosphate ions. So here's what I want you to do. After you've written those ions on the other side, without their charges, cover up the actual formula of each ion. And now, we'll do the crisscross, just like you've done in the past. For instance, when we did magnesium as a 2-plus ion and phosphide 
has a 3 minus ion, and we put these two guys together, the other side looked like this, magnesium and phosphide ions. Now we do the crisscross. And what we did before was we took the 3, put it as the magnesium subscript, take the 2, and put it as the phosphide uh, subscript. And then all the numbers and the charges work out beautifully. And so we're going to do that now. And let's, let's go ahead and cover them up just for doing the same thing. I'm not going to actually cover them. You'll still be able to see them. But we want to focus just on the 2 plus and the 3 minus. And so the 3 becomes the subscript for what? Take that in your head now. I hope you said magnesium. And the 2 up here becomes the subscript for, think of it in your mind, write it, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Here we go. So we have a subscript for magnesium here of 3 and for phosphorus as 2. And that's the correctly written magnesium phosphide molecule. And it's not quite perfectly written because I, I should have spaced it out a little bit, but you can get the idea of what I'm talking about there. Now, just like we did with magnesium phosphide, we're going to do this with the ammonium phosphate. So, here's the subscript for the phosphate. Now, that number is going to be 1. We don't write 1s. And we don't need a parenthesis because there's just one of those phosphates. So, as far as phosphate is concerned, we are done. However, the right guy, the phosphate, we remember over here, was a 3 minus. And so we take that number and put it as the subscript here. And we have to do it like this. Put our parenthesis, and then we put the 3. And then we have a correctly written ammonium phosphate ion, or ammonium phosphate molecule made up of ammonium and phosphate ions. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to move a little faster now. And mainly, I want to do this as a check for you. I'd like you to stop the recording and see if you can put together aluminum. This guy. Come on. Aluminum and hypochlorite. Okay, stop the recording and see if you can figure that out. Okay, the first thing that we need to do, hopefully you did this first. This is always your first step. Aluminum, leave yourself some space, fair amount of space, and the CLO. That's hypochlorite. Now we're going to go and put the subscripts in. And when we go to put the subscripts in, we want to cover up the ions and just leave their charges showing. And notice, by the way, that I always put the positive ion first when I'm writing a molecule. That's the way it always works. So, let's go ahead and figure out for aluminum, we're going to take the one that's on the hypochlorite ion and use it for the subscript on aluminum. Now, we're not going to write anything here because it's a one. So, the next job is to come over here and look at the charge that determines the subscript for hypochlorite, and that's the charge on the aluminum ion. So, because we're going to have more than one hypochlorite, and because hypochlorite is made of two different atoms, the chlorine and the oxygen, we are going to need a parenthesis. So, we put our parenthesis around the hypochlorite, and we put a subscript of Three. And that 3 came from the charge from the aluminum ion. Okay, I'd like you to try this again. Work it on your own and see if you can come up with the right way to do this. Now remember, you want to write your ions first without the charge and then you're going to work out what the subscripts should be on each ion. So stop the recording, write it out, and then continue. All right, let's check it out. The first thing you should have written was the boron and the sulfate ions. 
without any charges. So what we've done is we took these two guys, forget about the charge that you see in the top right of the molecule, or of the atom, atom for the boron and the molecule for the sulfate. So these ions are all set. Now we know what the ions are, so we can cover up the ion and just look at the charge. So the guy on the left becomes the char or the 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 yeah the guy on the left gives you the subscript for the guy on the right. Now the guy on the right is polyatomic. It has sulfur and oxygen. So because it has two kinds of atoms, we are going to need a parenthesis for its subscript. So let's go ahead and write in that subscript after we put in the parenthesis, and that's a three. And then we look at the boron, and we see that the charge on the sulfate was two, so boron is going to have to have a subscript of two, but you'll notice it's just a single atom, so single atoms do not have subscripts. I hope that makes a big difference for you. Uh, for my students, as well as those of you watching the video, I think it would be helpful for you to go ahead and look and see what we did in our do now. The do now for today was to complete these two formulas. And so we've got our equations. We're going to have this guy and this guy. What I'd like you to do is write them both out and see if you can get them right and follow the order that I did as I showed you the examples up there. And turn off the, the recording and so let's, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is check you out on letter A where we had aluminum ion and carbonate ion. Okay, this should have been your first step to write the ions on the left and then on the right your beginning of the formula which is not going to have any charges in it. So let's go ahead and look and now that we've got the ions written on the right, the next thing we were supposed to do is cover these guys up, use the charge for the guy on the right, which in this case was the aluminum ion, and we're going to use that for a subscript for carbonate, because carbonate has more than one kind of atom in it. We have to use a parenthesis and put the subscript in. The two came from the carbonate, Okay, that are coming from the carbonate, I should say. And now we put the two down here by the aluminum, and that's our formula. Okay, try the next one on your own, and then start the recording. Okay, first off, we write the ions on the right without their charges, and then we're going to cover up the ion formulas and just look at the charges so we can get our subscripts on the right. So the subscript for potassium which is this guy, is going to come from this three because that's the charge on the phosphate ion. Okay, so we're going to write that over here. And then the subscript for the guy on the right, we're not going to write one because it's a one. And if we don't have a subscript out here, we don't put a parenthesis in. So if you wrote it this way, that would be wrong. So you want to get rid of that and uh, make sure that you... Ah, I can't get it to your right just a moment. Okay, I'm just going to have to do it the old way and use the little eraser tool and erase that because that is the correct way to do it. I hope you find this helpful and hopefully by going through this stuff again it's set in your mind a little bit better.